Well, g'day everyone. Let me get rid of these now. So how are we all today? Um, looking forward to another live show. Now let me just see if I can fix this onto full screen for me. And I think it's this one. Oh yes. What an attractive looking man. <laughs> so say hi if you were in the chat guys, because uh, we're in pre-show at the moment. Uh, love to hear what you guys have to say. Uh, John's already putting out a uh, thing saying, don't disappoint me. I'll have a look at that uh, here. Let me just check this. Is this working? Yep. Now, uh, the, the problem is the discussions here are going to be a bit weird because this program I'm using is still in beta and it's playing up. I have contacted the guy about it, um, but if you put long uh, comments in, it's going to go off the screen like this is. But I'll read it out to you anyway. Um, I'm hoping it, it's fixed soon. He just says, we know this is a sony orientated channel, but I expect much discussion on the GH6 and the OM1 spec leaks. Uh, announcement schedules don't disappoint me i might just talk about it briefly john um i may do that in another video i'll just have to see heath said excelsior <laughs> what does that mean mark's here as well g'day mark how you going uh, from lovely brisbane um rocco said greetings from southwest florida i just got the new sony 70 to 200 Woohoo! that looks like it's a great lens uh, it's a, a big improvement over the original lens actually so um great purchase i'm jealous um, I've still got these 70 to 200 f4, but I'm seriously thinking about selling it. I'm just not using it. Oh, I'm, I'm actually going to have a wine today. Let me pour this. Because guess what? Kerry has let me down again. I mean, what's the world coming to? I don't know. I mean, it's it's just not good enough, Kerry. If you are listening to this, it is just not good enough. Some things, yeah, you know, you just have to put up with, honestly. Mm. Still not bad, though. I'm gonna sp <laughs> I'm gonna spill this for sure on something. I know it. Oh, it's dangerous. <laughs> I'm paranoid about leaving it anywhere. Where can I put it? Oh, I'm gonna stick it right over here. I'll just have another. I'll just have another sip. You ready? Here we go. Hang on. Hmm. <laughs> It's fruity. It's sort of minty, not minty, it's sort of apricot-y. Isn't that what they always say when they're smelling and tasting it? They smells of tannin. Mmm. I don't know. Anyway, let's keep going. Um, so you got the 7200, so I'm so jealous. Um, Nashi said, good morning, David. Cheers from Port Stevens. Long Rider gave me a donation. Hang on, I want to see if this works. Does, does the thing still work? <laughs> Man Osla, thanks, Long Rider. I uh, really appreciate the my man Osla. I love it. I'm just going to play it again because I love those freaking things that come down. Here we go. Ready? Woohoo! I should put a sound effect in there, shouldn't I? Um, anyway, so uh, yeah, I am. I'm jealous of you getting that 7200 because I love it. I've got the 7200 F4, but I am thinking about selling it. Good morning, David. Cheers from Port Stevens. Lovely spot there, Nash. Um, hi, David. Good morning from South Korea. How are you, Matt? John Pep said hello from Detroit, Michigan. Um, RVG said uh, hello, David, from Fort, Fort, is it Fort Lauderdale in Florida. Lovely Florida. I haven't been to Florida. I have to make it down there one day. Um, hello from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Tom. Keith, g'day, Keith. How you going, buddy? Um, from Rich, wow, what's that mean? It's sunny and warm outside today. Oh, that's nice, Keith. Um, it's a lovely day here in Melbourne today. It's a lovely weekend, actually. Um, B Gray uh, 7 says, hello from sunny San Diego. And Alien Drone Services, uh, hi from Oregon, David. Uh, so good to see you all here. Um, Outdoor Gear Test has just popped in as well, uh, saying good evening from Atlanta, Georgia. Is that Georgia? G G G A? G A. I'm not sure. Oh, Keith gave me a donation. Here we go again. <laughs> 499 great live stream day Woo, thanks keith i love it um thanks so much buddy um i've got a few really interesting stories to share with you today some are, are really interesting uh, a couple of rumors which are, are pretty cool too but and then we'll look at some reviews and things like that um as well um what have we got here? Uh, RVG said, um, hello, David, for Lauderdale, Florida. The new Sony 70 to 202 is a great lens. I use it for wildlife. Yep, it certainly would be. Yeah, sorry about that clipping out the end here, guys. I'm having issues with this 
program I'm using called HDR Graphics. Uh, they know about it. I've just got to wait. The, the problem has come about. It's my fault. That blinkered again. I must, it must be this USB. Um, the problem is on my end because I've upgraded to the latest OS X uh, from the operating system uh, due to the fact that I wanted to sh do some things that the monitor allows you to do. Um, so I think the beta version of OX OS X broke the program. <laughs> so until they can update the program I'm using, uh, it's going to be a bit of an issue. But oh well. But yeah, the 7200 is a great lens. Um, Alan said, "Morning from Seaham in the UK." Good morning, Alan. How are you? Mark said, "I was supposed to have a play with the 7200 V2, but stuck with gastro." Oh, that's not good, Mark. Um, Richland, ah, so you're from Richland, Washington, Keith. Um, Simon says, uh, hello from uh, hell, hell from North Dakota. I suppose that's hello. <laughs> uh, John said, hello, greetings from New York City. Yes, GA is Georgia. I love it. All right, so let's get, I'm going to get stuck into the news today because um, hopefully we can not go much longer than an hour and I can go and have lunch with Kerry. Um, so let me bring this up. Let me switch over to the, this. Uh, and let me come down to here. Because now that should disappear, that chat. Why isn't that going? That's weird. It's meant to disappear after 30... Oh, there it goes. Oh, 30 seconds is quite a long time. Um, so I'm looking up here, and some of the rumours... So these are the rumours, what's coming up with lenses and things like that. Now, it's interesting because uh, we're obviously looking at this, going to get a new Tamron lens or Tamron lenses. And I'd love to know your opinion about what we need. Um... I'm curious about what they will do next. Now, if it looks like, uh, if you look at the latest release of lenses, and that was the 35 to 150, um, and the 18 to 300, look, those lenses have been amazing. Uh, the 18, the 35 to 150 was outstanding. It really is an incredible lens. Uh, I've got reviews of those. If you want to go back on my channel, you'll see the reviews for those. So they are all in there. Um, so you'll be able to have a look at uh, those reviews. So I'm curious to know what they're going to release next. Is it going to be a prime or is it going to be a, uh, you know, a tele, a tele lens? I mean, I'd love them to bring out a really wide lens. That could be something really interesting as well. Uh, they haven't got something, you know, that's really wide, like 12 millimeter or something like that, a 40 millimeter. So that would be pretty cool. Um, anyway, I'll find out because they'll send me one for review. I'm just not going to be able to say, uh, with you uh, until I'm allowed to say what it is, but it it will be interesting anyway. So it looks like um, we're going to get a new Tamron lenses or lens or lens, and also lower lenses as well announcements. And also the Sony 85 1.2 is rumored to be announced in spring, so that's not far away. That's only a few weeks away. Um, so I'm really excited about that one. Look, I'm probably not going to be able to afford it for a while because. Really, I've, I've still got not much work. Um, but um, I'd love to um, get that when weddings pick up. And it's probably going to be next year before they pick up for me. Um, but uh, I, I really would love to get that lens because I love the 85 Batis. Uh, and so then I'll probably, I don't know if I'd sell the 85. I might keep that because that's so light and small. And it also has stabilisation in it, which can be handy as well. Uh, but I would love to buy the Sony 85 1.2 uh, if... I get the funds to do that because I've always been jealous of the Canon one. So um, if I can get that, I will be tickled pink. So that's sort of what they're saying here. Now, let me just scroll down here because what they're also saying, well, they're saying here that we've just had new lenses this month and I'm going to talk about those uh, today as well. But they're saying also that, uh, that Sigma 20mm FE F2 lens has just been announced and also the Samyang 135 1.8 lens uh, is there as well. So like I've said to you before, we're blessed now with Sony because we have so many different lenses and things like that that we can use. Uh, it's incredible. Um, they're saying also that Tamron uh, said they will announce new lenses or lens. So we don't know yet. So we've got to wait and see sort of what that is. Uh, I'll come back to the chat and see what you guys are hoping for later. Uh, the Lauer said they will announce new lenses as well. Um, now they're also saying with cameras, he's saying that they're 99% Certainty, no new EMAN camera will be announced at CP+. Plus. Now, I read that CP+, Plus has now just gone online as well. I'm sure I read that somewhere. Um, the next camera to be announced is a new ZV-1 style camera in spring. So whether that's going to be a ZV-2 
Um, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to announce in that, but that's going to be an interesting one to see what they do with that camera because it's already a really good camera. I love it. I had the, I have the ZV-1. Um, I really like it. It's a great camera just to take out and about, uh, and the focus is just nuts. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. Whether you'll get 4K60 in that would be brilliant. Um, so that could be really cool if they add... 4K 60 onto onto a uh, ZV-1. Uh, the 85 1.2 may be announced sometime after CP+. Plus, so they're still saying sometime in spring. And that probably makes sense to me. Uh, I did pick that they were going to change the 70 to 200 uh, and also the 24 to 70. I knew that was sort of going to happen. Um, it had to happen because those lenses were getting reasonably old and they... You know, they needed a version two of those lens for things like focus and sharpness and things like that. Not that the old lenses were bad, but the new ones are, are just better. Um, and I also picked that the 85 1.2 would be coming out as well. Sony sort of need to do that to push that boundary at the longer end, and I'm really excited about that. Let me just put my watch on silent. Oh, get off. Oh. Uh, where are we? Do not disturb. There we go. Um, yeah, so I'm really excited about an 85 as well. Uh, the 1.2 will just be a dream. Look, I would still use my 135 most of the time, but I do when I'm in more sort of closed areas, I'll grab the 85 or if I wanted to travel a little bit lighter. So that could be an issue as well, but I do still love the 85. It's a great portrait lens. Um, let me just see what else they're saying. Uh, they're saying, I know this doesn't sound uh, exciting for now, but I've been told there is a lot to come, particularly during the second half of 2022. And look, I would still think that's true. I still think we're going to get a new A9. Um, it'll be an A9 III, I would think. Um, and I still believe that we probably will get a new A7R type series of camera as well. I don't think the A1 is going to get updated at this stage. I think probably next year for that, but the A7 series will get an update. And also the, um, um, what did I just say? The A7R, I can't remember. I'm going blank. I need more wine. But they're definitely going to get updates. Uh, oh, the A9 III, yep. The A9 III and the A7R camera will definitely, I think, get upgraded. But the second half of the year, it looks like that's going to happen, particularly with, you know, the, the chip shortage at the moment. I wouldn't expect too much in that regard. So, I mean, they're having trouble keeping up with A7 IV and A7S shipping at the moment. Uh, so it's, it's going to be pretty good anyway. But let me just switch back because I want to see what you guys are saying about what lens you'd like to see. Uh, so if you have got that, um, put that in the uh, Q&A because I'd love to know what you think. Uh, let me just come down here. Uh, the Happy Cam just said, beautiful day in Oregon. Um, Long Rider is just talking to John Drummond. I uh, just want to see. The Happy Clam, uh, Clam said, we need a budget 600 f4. That would be interesting. I wonder if Tamron will bring out a really long lens. That would be pretty cool. Um, I'd love to test that out too. Whatever comes out, I'll test for Tamron anyway. So I'm pretty excited about doing that as well. Longrider said, uh, the happy claim, I have the 600 F4 on order. Uh, I think he's talking about a cheaper one. Um, nice dream nice dream lens, the 600 to F4. <laughs> I emptied the piggy bank. Uh, Longrider said, I love it. <laughs> Um, nice. I recently bought the Sony A1, uh, Stuart James. Yeah, I've seen your, your videos about that, Stuart. That's a great camera, isn't it? That is amazing. I'd love to have the money to buy an A1. I just can't afford it. Um, Nash Hall said, I've just purchased the Sony 85 1.8 and I love it. Great bang for the buck. It is. The 85 1.8, I think, is is a very similar lens to the Batis 85. They, uh, they both give a similar image. Um, the thing I loved about the Batis is it does have that stabilisation in the lens, so that, that's really good. Um, but the Sony 85 is, is terrific value for money. It really is. Um, what else? Uh, John said, the way Canon are raising prices, it's it's good thing I got my essentials already. I think everything's probably going to go up, though. Um, it's like spring on the Oregon beach today. Stuart said, uh, David, have you seen many videos with all the people with the A7 uh, for AF issues? Yeah, I have. Um, and I'll, I'll just talk about that while we've got that here. Um, where was that? Let me just have a look. Uh, let me just switch back to this. Um, Sony have said 
in here that, well, they haven't said it, but there's been wide reports of close distance IAF focus issues that need to be fixed. But I have heard that there's a firmware update coming out uh, very, very soon, so it'll be fixed. I wouldn't particularly worry about it, guys. I mean, the, the A7 IV, it's a new camera. There are going to be issues that come out with that, and I'm sure with the firmware update that they have with this that it's going to be fixed in this firmware update that's coming up uh, as well. So I'm not sure if they mention anything else uh, about that down here. Uh, I think they were saying it had some issues with focus on eye, whether it was back focusing or front focusing. Um, it just says um, it is about the A74 that has by Sony owners confirmed wide aperture close distance IAF front focus issues. So it's a front focus issue like frame filling the face or head and shoulder portraits which makes the AF to focus on the eyebrows. Oh, okay, so it focuses on the eyebrows or the eyelashes only, uh, but not the pupil. Oh, I'm sure this will be fixed. Uh, it's saying down there, that down the bottom down here, that Sony denied this issue for a long time, but we could make some pressure and still do. But, well, I did hear yesterday that they were talking about uh, adding a firmware update for this, so I wouldn't worry about it uh, too much at this stage because I do definitely think it's going to be fixed. Um... So I hope that answers your question, Stuart. Uh, they're talking to each other. Uh, Mark said, still have the 85 1.2 Canon with the MC11 adapter as well. Uh, would you sell that, Mark, and get the uh, Sony one if it, when it comes out? It's definitely going to come out. Um, Gear Test Outdoors said, love my Tamron 35 to 150, now holding for an F2 wide angle zoom to complement it. Um, yeah, that it's nice. That 35 to 150 is brilliant. I, I absolutely love that lens when I uh, used it. It's just so sharp. Focus is great. I love that focal range. It's terrific. Um, let's keep coming down. Uh, the Happy Clam said we need a 400 2.8 APS-C lens. Hmm, interesting. Um, Capano said 100 f1.4. I know there was rumours about that for ages, uh, the 100. But... It seems to, those rumours seem to have just disappeared, and I don't understand that, but perhaps it's now with the chip shortage and everything else, they've decided to concentrate on uh, the 85 1.2. I mean, I did hear rumours about, I was talking about that over 12 months ago, the 100. Um, Mark said, let's hope there'll be plenty of firmware like the Bird IAF in video for the A1. Yeah, and I'm also hoping that they bring things to the uh, A7S III, Mark. Uh, I'd love to see... Uh, you know, the um, focus breathing added, they really should add that to the A7S III as well. Like, that's a brilliant feature in the Sony A7 IV. Um, but it, it's really good. And I'm sure, Sony, if you're listening, I'm sure they're going to bring that to us in the A7S uh, III and also the A... It doesn't have that in the A1 either, does it? I don't think. I don't remember seeing it when I reviewed it. So I'm hoping Sony brings... I mean, the A7S is still their major camera at this stage for video. So they really should be adding that into it, which is, you know, that focus breathing sort of uh, fix that they have. Um, Tom said, I would like to see a one-to-one 100mm macro lens. Um, Stuart said, it was an accident. It made me... <laughs> it was an accident. It made me buy it laugh out loud. I don't know. I'd love to have the money to buy it, though. The A1 is really an amazing camera. Um, RVG said, I would like to see an update of the Sony 100 to 400 GM. That'll come. It's just that, you know, it re that hasn't been out for that long at this stage, so, but it will come eventually. Um, Stuart said, apparently going by one of my viewers, there is a firmware update coming. Yep, there certainly will be. Uh, Mark said he has no focus issues with his A74 copy. Uh, Stuart James said it's um, it's a number of the A74 bodies, not all of them. Yeah, it's like anything with firmware. Remember, it's a software thing, so it could only affect certain cameras. So that, um, that's why I'm saying I'm sure it will be fixed with firmware that's coming out. Uh, Mark said, I did a test on that with the A74 and the 24GM uh, yesterday, no issue. So that'll be on Mark's uh, channel. Uh, Rocco said, uh, RVG1, any experience with the 70 to 200 and the two times extender? Yeah, I have used that. Uh, not the newest version. Uh, I have used the previous version and it worked great. Um, George said, hello, David. Hope you're doing well. Um, hope you're doing well. I have fixed my A7 uh, III S3 F frames per second problem. My shutter was uh, incorrect. My bad. Oh, okay. Your shutter was wrong. 
Um, Stuart said one thing which amaze, uh, amazing in my A, the RX10 is the high frame rate video up to 1,000 frames per second slow motion video. Would love that in the A1. I know that's incredible. You can also do incredible um, stuff with the ZV1 as well uh, for high frame rate stuff. That's where it's terrific actually. All right, let's switch back to this. Oh, it's that one actually. What am I doing? Take that off. Um, that, uh, that'll disappear in a minute. Because uh, I wanted to just show you this because DP Review just did a review on um, the Sony a7 IV. Um, and I wanted to sort of just take you through that to sort of see what they uh, were saying about it. I'll leave the links for this down below so you will be able to get a view, you know, like a uh, read of it. I'm not going to go through everything, just sort of uh, things that I think are important. Uh, again, the, the key specs we all know about now, it's got a 33 megapixel BSI CMOS sensor, 10 frames per second shooting, um, in-body stabilisation, uh, rated up to 5.5 EV, and it is um, full width over sample, so it's 7K down to 4K. Um, so you'll get fantastic video out of this at 30p. Uh, 4K 60, uh, it has that super 35 crop. Only you know if that worries you or not. Um, I mean, I'd still buy it for that. Uh, that wouldn't worry me too much. But I do like having the full frame look, though. So yeah, if I had the choice, I mean, I would definitely buy a, a camera that didn't have the 4K crop. Um, but it's there. It's At least they've given you 4K 60. 10-bit uh, video with HEIF stills capture, H.265 video. Uh, the letdowns definitely for me are the uh, 3.6 million dot um, viewfinder is not good at all for nowadays. Uh, and the, L, the screen on the back is just crap, and we've discussed that before. Um, but they've improved things like the twin card slots. Um, just looking at the body there, um, I'm going to go down and see what they say. Uh, about if there's any issues because apart from that look I, it seems to me that this really is probably the best hybrid camera that's out there uh, if you want a decent um, megapixel camera that you know this is 33 uh, and you want decent video like good video um, this probably is the best multi-purpose camera or fusion type camera that you've got out there uh, you know my opinion about this though I, I prefer the a7s3 um, because I love the 12 megapixel file size and, and I do definitely think the video is, is better in the A7S III. Uh, I watched a video about that this morning actually from another Australian um, was comparing the two of them side by side um, and he said can you pick which was what video and I could pick it each time. I did correctly pick the A7S uh, video. It, it's little things with the A7S III like the um, dual gain ISO Having that ability to go from 640 to 12,800 and have that clean at that resolution or that ISO is just unbelievable. Um, and there's just something I love about the images, still images from that 12 megapixel sensor, but that's me. I mean, but if you're after a camera that's less money, that you want to have both video and stills that can do it all, the a7 IV is just brilliant. I mean, it probably is, if, if you're not, if you're not comfortable with shooting with an A7S III because you can't really crop much, um, this is the perfect wedding and event camera. I mean, it really is. I, I like the new dials that are on there, like the video and the, uh, the stills and then the SNQ mode that you've got there as well. Um, the breathing compensation, this is one thing, like it's up here. Breathing compensation is something they really have to add into the A7S III and the A1. Uh, I mean, I think that is a definite thing that they need to add into those cameras. So hopefully that will come with a firmware update. Uh, if Sony don't do that, they're holding back, and I think that's wrong. I mean, I really do think they should add that uh, into the latest two cameras that are there. Um, live streaming is also a great feature as well if you did want to live stream from this too. HEIF, um, I'm not, haven't been using much. I must do some more tests on that to see how that uh, compares. It, it is apparently much better than using JPEG. Uh, the dynamic range, there's much more bit depth in it. So I'd love to try that and I will try that soon, uh, HEIF with my A7S III. I'd love to give that a go. Uh, and then there's just some comparisons with how it compares to other cameras. I mean, I think if you're looking at this, um, comparing it to most other cameras out there now, I think this is the top of its type in that range. I mean, you can't compare it to the Z9. You can't compare it with the A1. Uh, even the A7S III, they're different cameras. But uh, if you're dealing with it in its range, I do definitely think that the uh, A7 IV is probably the best 
in its class if you're looking at that. I mean, the megapixel alone, you're talking about 33 megapixel there against the EOS R6, um, which is 20. Um, you can also see there that the Nikon Z6 II is 24, and the Sony a7 III uh, obviously is 24 as well. Um, AF sensor technology, look, I think probably this, the AF now is good enough on all the cameras that are released now. I think if you can't shoot decent video on any of the, or decent stills on any of these new cameras, even the a7 III, um, there's something wrong. I mean, we're getting to the point now where really it, it's just a non-issue. So uh, stabilisation, um, I still probably think the Canon R6 will be better than the Sony in stabilisation. Canon have really nailed that. That's one thing that Sony could improve. But you have got Catalyst Browse too if you wanted to do that way and turn all the stabilisation off in camera. But the issue then is that you have to up your shutter speed. So that's something you sort of have to consider uh, if you're doing that as well. Uh, frames per second is 10 frames per second. Uh, the R6 does improve it. Um, I mean, it's 12 frames per second and it's got 20 on electronic. Um, rear screen, it gets blitzed. I mean, the... the um, Sony is destroyed if you look at the rear screen. You've got 1.4 million dot on the Sony. You've got 1.6 on the Canon. And you've got 2.1 million on the Z6 II, uh, which is nuts. Uh, video capture, it's probably pretty much the same if you look at them. Um, and they've all got the S-Log and everything else as well. I love the CF Express Type A cards. I think that's great. Uh, but I think if you're looking overall, they are all pretty close now. But I think I probably would give um, the Sony a7 IV uh, just above those other cameras, particularly due to the, that megapixel count that's there as well. Everything else is, you know, is pretty similar if you're looking at that. Apart from the EVF and the screen is just terrible. Body is great. I mean, the body design, I think they've really nailed the body now, Sony. I think they're, they're really terrific. Uh, I like the way um, that you can now uh, customise um, your, your exposure compensation dial. Uh, I think that's a really nice feature that they've added in there. Um, I love how, and this is a great feature too with, with the Sony cameras, I love how you can got the dual slots and you can put your standard ST uh, slots in there as well. Um, the uh, interface is great now, and Sony obviously are going to move all of their interface over to this now. So that, that's terrific, and I really like it. I really love um, the latest Sony uh, menu system. I think it's great. I didn't have a problem actually with the a7 III's uh, interface or the a9, but this, this new interface is much, much better. Um, consistent smartphone connection. Um, closable shutter. Now, this is interesting. I'm not a big... I don't really care about that, to be honest. So I just think that's something else that could fail. And, and look, there, there'll be many people that will argue against me, and that's fine. We're all allowed our own opinion. Um, this could be added in the A7S uh, III if, uh, by firmware. I'm sure of it if they wanted to. It's probably something I wouldn't use, though. I'm more paranoid about something getting stuck in there and then not letting it open again. And, and I think I don't really have an issue with dust because I just use a blower every time I change lenses. Uh, if I'm on, if I'm in conditions like the beach and stuff like that, I just don't change lenses anyway. I'll just do it, go back to the car and then change it in there. Um, I don't know. I mean, you can let me know in the comments box down below. You may love this feature and you may want this feature, but I just use a blower and I, I, it's one less thing that can go wrong. But but that's just me. Um, I do hope for people that want it though that they do add this into the A7S III. Oh, I think it had in the A1. You might be able to correct me if if I'm wrong. I can't remember from the review I did. I think it does have it. I'm pretty sure. Um, let me just come down and see if they were saying anything that they thought was wrong. Uh, image quality is outstanding. I mean, it really is outstanding. Uh, let me just keep... Oh, I've got to come down through here. I'm just going to go and see if they show anything that's wrong with it. Um, they're not mentioning the eye autofocus, I don't think, at all in this. So uh, they're just saying here that based on our experiences, Sony's AF system is very powerful and very easy to use, uh, giving little reason to jump between many of its frankly overwhelming selection of AF area modes. We found leaving the camera on AFC with a medium sized flexible tracking AF point and face IA priority turned on performed very well. Now, the way I mostly use autofocus on these cameras is I use center autofocus. Um, with tracking and then what I do is 
I will immediately grab whatever I'm looking at with the center. And it's particularly good for when a bride is walking down the aisle and things like that. But I will use the center focus with tracking and then I can recompose from there. So that's the way I'm using. It's just on AFC, center, and then it will track. And I've found that's brilliant. But everyone has different ways of working with this. Uh, it's, it's interesting. But, you know, the autofocus on the A7 IV, I have tried it, is brilliant. Um, I'm just seeing if it mentions anything with uh, video capture. It's just saying here that uh, the APS-C crop mode, along with the faster shutter speeds you're likely to use for 60p capture, are going to impose a noise penalty on the 4K60 output, which is worth being aware of. Uh, there will be a noise penalty if you're comparing this to the A7S3. There's nothing like the A7S3 if you want noiseless uh, images. Um, video stabilization, they're saying, uh, two levels of it, you've got standard and active, uh, which works very, very well. Like I said, you can use Sony's Catalyst Browse if you want to use that uh, to give amazing stabilisation, actually. Um, they're also saying there that it's an extremely good video camera. So let's have a look at the things they're saying they like. It's saying good image quality both in stills and video. I think it's excellent uh, image quality in both of those, actually. Uh, simple, powerful AF system. Decent dynamic range gives flexible RAW files. 10-bit video delivers useful processing flexibility. Um, improved ergonomics, uh, extensive customization, and USB uh, PD support for charging the uh, and or operation. The things they don't like is they're saying eye detection seem. Oh, okay, so they have pulled that up. That's interesting. Eye detection seems less accurate than previous cameras. So that's something that you know we're hoping that Sony can fix uh, with their um, firmware updates. They're also saying rear screen is fairly low. It's crap. Sony, come on. It's, it's about time that you really changed all of these. It's ridiculous. I, I couldn't believe when they brought this out with that rear screen. <sighs> Um, video stabilization struggles with intentional uh, camera movement. Burst rate drops from 10 frames per second to 6 frames per second if you want to uh, full D dynamic range raw. Summer options and settings are needlessly complex. Um, so I think that's about it really. Uh, let me just go down here. You can see the scores there. Like I said, I'll um, share this with you. Just as a conclusion, they've said that the Sony a7 IV is an all-round capable camera, and that's why I think it will be a brilliant wedding and events camera. Um, uh, supporting the photographer in almost any situation, its video capabilities live up to a similar standard, making it hugely flexible imaging tool. Uh, its extreme levels of customization can be daunting, but its powerful autofocus system means it can be a very simple camera to use. They're saying good for most photographic or video pursuits, uh, not so good for sports photography um, and things like that. And that's it, so I'm not going to go through that anymore. Uh, next story, and I'll come back to the uh, Q&A chat after this now. Uh, Sigma have announced now this F2 DG. Um, DN contemporary lens looks nice um, this is it here looking at the switches there you've got the manual focus and auto focus switch it does have your auto aperture on there so it looks like a, it's um, I'm, I'm think it must be declickable looking at that uh, hopefully it's declickable um, but you can switch it between auto and then choosing your manual um, aperture there as well uh, I'm just going to come down and see what the specs are with this um, I like all the look of these lens, actually. I think they look really sort of vintage and, and retro. I, I like them. Um, the specifications, it weighs 366 grams. It's 418 with the lens hood. Uh, the price is 699 euros, so it's probably going to be a similar price US. It's an F2 to F22, um, which, is, which is fine for that sort of wide-angle lens. Um, the length is 75 millimeter. Filter is 62 millimeter. So it's, it's actually quite nice and small. Nine blade apertures. Uh, it does have the AFM, uh, F, AF manual focus uh, switch. It's dust and moisture resistance. Minimal focus distance is 22 centimetres, and it's a 1 to 6, 7 magnification ratio, so that's not too bad. Uh, it's got a magnetic lens cap and standard lens cap included, and the lens hood's included as well. So this gives you a look at about what the lenses are. They haven't said whether it's declickable, though. Um, I wonder if it'll say down here somewhere. Let me just keep checking. 
Um, but I like the look of the lens. I think the lens looks really nice. And I love to, for video, I love that sort of gri big um, grip that it's got around the lens um, focusing ring there, which is, which is really nice as well. Um, so you can see here that's the magnetic lens attachment that you can attach onto the top. Uh, no, it's in French anyway. I wouldn't be able to understand it anyway. If anyone knows whether it's declickable, if they could just let me know in the live chat, I'd just be curious to know. Uh, the lens hood looks pretty cool, actually, how that's magnetic. Um, but anyway, it's it's released. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, it really does from that review. And I'll leave that link down below so you can have a look at that. Um, let's just talk about this next one now. Um, because Sony, oops, where were we? Um, they've discontinued the A-mount lenses. I need to move that a little bit. Let me just see if I can just shift this a touch. I'm going to have to move it over. Let me just see if I can move it this way and this way. Okay. So it's saying they've discontinued Sony A-mount lenses, a final nail in the A-mount's coffin. So it looks like it's finished now, finally been finished. Um, they're all saying now discontinued, so it's a shame. But, I mean, I've been, we've all been known that this will has been going to happen for a fair while now. So it, it's a shame, but it's just the way it is. And I suppose in, in another way, they probably can't justify having these two complete systems anyway. I mean, the R&D alone would be just crazy. So... I just wanted to talk about that, but, you know, that's that's there. Um, also, this is pretty cool because Sony, they're saying in here that uh, Sony takes the biggest booth at the NAB show. You can see if you look there on the right-hand side how big that is. I mean, they've smashed Nikon. They've smashed um, Canon. No, I don't know if Nikon's there, actually. Are they there? I can't even see Nikon. I'm sure they'd be there somewhere, surely. Uh, anyway, they, they've got the biggest stand. Looks terrific. So that's great. What are they going to be releasing? This is going to be interesting because I don't think there's any way they're going to be doing that unless they're going to be releasing something. Uh, the show is actually April the 23rd to the 27th. Uh, it's at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Uh, usually Sony doesn't really announce uh, new E-mount gear, but you never know, and we still miss the Cine E-mount lenses uh, they tested over two years ago. Uh, that's about all it's saying. So hopefully, look at these lenses, how amazing. I'd love the money for those. Um, anyway, it's interesting that they've got the biggest, um, um, you know, area there at, at NAB. And the last thing uh, I wanted to just talk about was the GH6 uh, that has just been, basically, it, they're going to say it's introduced on February the 22nd, so that's just been announced. Um, or it will be announced, I should say. But it looks pretty good looking at the specifications that this camera's got. I had the GH4 and I loved it. Um, but uh, they're saying here uh, that it was already a decent mirrorless Micro Four Thirds. That was a GH4. Uh, the camera, its success of the GH5 and later the GH5S. And the, No, I had the GH5 actually, I think. Uh, that came almost legendary among filmmakers. Let's look at the specs that they're saying about this. Uh, they're saying that it's going to have a new high-speed micro four-thirds sensor and Venus engine uh, image processor. I hope they fix the autofocus. That was the only thing I hated about it. Um, a variety of recording modes and shooting assist functions designed for photo, video, hybrid use. Uh, DCI 4K, uh, 60p, 10-bit 422 without time limitation. Um, and it never overheated. It actually never overheated. It was brilliant. It was probably the best camera I've ever used in that regard. Um, 4K 120p, 10-bit high frame rate. And it's also going to have 5.7K 60p 10-bit. So it doesn't go up to 8K, though, which is interesting. Um, the original GH5 was the breakthrough. I'm just seeing if it mentions anything else uh, about this. They're saying it's going to be... Um, well, probably about the, it might be a fraction dearer, might be 1,700, 1,800 uh, probably is the price that this is going to be. Uh, it's a good camera at that price range though, but they haven't mentioned, uh, I'm hoping that they fix the autofocus on that camera. Uh, look, the, for stills, the autofocus is as good as anything I've ever used. It's brilliant. It really was good. Um, 
but the video autofocus uh, is terrible. I mean, I really hated it, and it, it was a real pain, but, you know, that, that's it. Anyway, so I have showed that uh, as well, John, so I did discuss it for you. Um, so let me just come back to me, and we'll go through some Q&A. How are we going for time? Oh, actually, it's been quick today. It's been good. Um, and then we'll call it a day. So have, if you have any questions, just fire away, guys. Um, where were we down to? Um, I think it was around here. Uh, there, Tom. Uh, Tom said, and sorry if that jumps out, guys. Like I said, I've got problems with this um, program I'm using. Uh, I have been using my A7 IV to tether to my notebook. Um, shoot small birds less than two foot away. The AF is fantastic. Yep, the AF, uh, the A7 IV is brilliant in autofocus. George said, is the low resolution viewfinder acceptable? No, it's not. Um, and it's, it's one thing that I could not understand why you would do that. And anyone that has got the A7S III will understand what I'm talking about. The EVF in the A7S III is just mind blowing. If you combine that EVF with the better uh, screens at the back, um, you would have an unbelievable camera. And that's probably what's going to be the next generation that's coming along, where you're going to get that EVF and also the better LCD on the back. Because the EVF, when I go back to my other cameras, after looking at the EVF from the A7S III, I hate it. I really hate it. The, the EVF is like looking at... Um, it's like looking through your glasses or, or normal vision with your um, head's display that's come up on it. it. It's just people that have got the A7S III and the A1 would understand exactly what I'm talking about. It, it's just so good. But no, neither of those are good enough for a camera in 2022. Um, DP Review mentioned the close focusing issue. Yep. Video on the A7 IV is fantastic. Yep. It's down sampling from 7K, so it certainly will be. Um, I use a 1.4 and it works great. That's the extender. I use it on the A1 in APS-C mode and get 410 millimeter at f4. Agree, the EVF and the LCD on the A7 IV is not crazy good, uh, but a small step up from the A7 III. Yeah, it's just not good enough. You're paying four grand for that camera is ridiculous in Australia to put the that EVF and the LCD on there. It's a shame because apart from that, it's brilliant. It's a brilliant camera. Seems like quality control may have been lacking on the A7 IV. No problems with AF overheating in mine, but it sounds like many are having issues. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be fixed with a firmware upgrade. Uh, John said the A7 IV EVF is okay at 3.69 million pixels, comparable to the R6, which I find very good. The LCD is a disappointment for nailing live view focus. Otherwise, there's a uh, little not to like. Um, Stuart said, I tried out the A1 last night on the moon in 4K60 at 600 megabits a second and laughed. I had 14 minutes to record time <laughs> on an 80 gigabyte CF. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, isn't it? Uh, I was like, I won't be using that much laugh out loud. I know. The data rates on these new um, cameras are incredible. Uh, I shoot concert video. This is Nash said this with the A7S III and the A7 IV and in 10-bit 422, uh, S-Log3, Cine. I wouldn't notice a difference in the footage. A7 IV breathing compensation works incredibly well. Yeah, that's why I hope they bring that to the A7S III. That's, it's so good. Uh, super happy with the A7 IV. Um, Heath said, the camera summary mentions a close-focusing wide aperture. Yep. Uh, he also he said Sony will fix it. I'm sure they will. Uh, George said, uh, the 9.4 million dot... Uh, 9.44 million dot viewfinder on my A7S3 is just mind blowing. It is. I agree, George. I love it so much. It 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 is breathtaking how good that is. Uh, Stuart said, "Remember the A7 IV uh, now has intelligent stabilization now in 4K, which came from the RX10 uh, originally, but it crops in a bit." Yep. Um, you're talking about this, the active stabilization. Uh, Sony stabilization is uh, linked to that 44 millimeter mount. Uh, otherwise, it's good enough for stills. For video, no one's Ibis beats a gimbal yet. True. Um, the GH5 is the best stabilization I've ever used. It literally is like holding the camera on a gimbal. Uh, the GH5 is crazy how good that is. Uh, it seems one guy had to put a bit of sand in his shutter 
Seems one guy who had put a bit of sand in his shadow uh, when it was down, when he swapped lenses, it wrecked it, uh, it wrecked it on his A1, a new shutter. Yep, that's why I wouldn't use it. Uh, I would not use that closing the shutter because if it gets dirt trapped in there, it's stuffed. Um, and that's the issue. I have uh, closed uh, shutter deactivated. I'd be the same, Mark. I wouldn't use it. Uh, I like the idea of a closable shutter, but only if it uses separate shutter and not the very sensitive main shutter. Um, Mark said, can't forget the video focus map mode, which is brilliant. Another item missing on the A7S III. Yeah, that does seem like it's it's pretty cool. I'm not sure I, when I used it. Yeah, perhaps you get rid. Uh, perhaps you get used to it, Mark. Um, when I used uh, the A7 IV a couple of times, I didn't like that feature that much. I, I like. I found the focus peaking, particularly in the A7S III, is very very accurate. Uh, I use that through the EVF. This is why I'm saying having that high resolution EVF, if you're doing critical focus, manual focus, is just so good because the um, uh, using focus on that is, is just brilliant. Uh, you just don't miss it at all. So, you know, I probably wouldn't use that focus map mode. Um, I just like focus peaking because it's so accurate uh, on it. But yeah, if you get used to it, it's another feature you're right that's there. They, they could add that easily in firmware update, I'm sure. Um, John said, I've had my R6 for one and a half years and have never had to clean the sensor, nor my R5 since last April. Sensor protection like the, the Z9s is an advantage even without a mechanical shutter. I just use the blower. Uh, I use that all the time. And I've got that one. I'll show you. Oh, it must be in my camera bag. I can't find it. I've got the electronic one, which I've done a review on, uh, and I've also used just the blo the you know the one that you can sort of uh, the blimpy one that you can use as well. Um, and I do that every time I change lenses, and I've never had a dust problem. Uh, I have the 35 millimeter version of this. Love it. I'm very pleased with the quality of the image. That's the Sigma. Yeah, I'm sure Sigma make great lenses. Look, they they all make great lenses now. Um, I'm jealous of wide primes available for E-mount. I know we've got so many wonderful lenses now, John. It's so good. Richard, I saw another video review and they said it's not. Oh, that's a shame, Richard. Uh, but, oh well, can't have everything. I love that about the Sony lenses. That declickable stuff on the 24 is just, I love it so much. Uh, and the 135. Um, I'm not sure what John's saying, but he's uh, talking in French there. Um, I think he's talking to someone else. Uh, sadly, APS-C is probably next on the chopper. I hope not. Um, the happy clam. I, I think they're still going to support APS-C for a while. Uh, and I really do believe that. And I hope that's the case. And the reason why I say that is, like I said to you before, that remember, Tamron have been reducing and releasing lenses. And I don't think they're going to do that for a body that's not going to be around. I mean, remember, they're part owned by Sony, 10% or something. So I don't think that APS-C is going to disappear. Um, I didn't th think Pantex was there. Uh, do you think the A7R4 will be August? Yeah, probably September, I would think. Um, I think it'll be around September, October, George, but around that timeline. Same as the A9 III. Uh, I'm still using my Minolta 1980 AF lens, but going to E-mount. Uh, Juzi is saying hi. G'day, Juzi. How are you, buddy? Nice to see you here. Rob said, my Sigma 35 lens is not declickable. Um, John said, Nikon is not listed among NAB 2022 exhibitors. Probably ROI. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? So they're not there, John. Wow. Really interesting. Uh, Ted said, another plus for the A7S is rolling shutter. Yeah, it, look, it is an issue. If, if you don't pan, it's not a problem. Like, if you don't... The, the issue for me is that I do, because... Uh, being a uh, fusion type shooter when I'm doing weddings, I sometimes don't have the time to not sort of pan quickly to get to what I need. And, you know, I could be following something or whatever, taking stills and then switching to video. Shooting in the car particularly, if you do shoot in the car and you wanted to show this sort of footage like outside, you will see terrible rolling shutter if you look at the R4, uh, the A7 IV. Um, if you don't want that, 
and like I said, I, I prefer not to have rolling shutter. If you don't want that, and it doesn't matter, you're not panning sort of whip pans and things like that, uh, the A7 IV is going to be good enough. Um, but if, if it does matter to you, yes, you will definitely get better, less rolling shutter in the A7 IV. In fact, it's almost not there at all. Um, but yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the A7 IV with rolling shutter, if, uh, like I said, as long as you don't do whip pans and things like that. But I like that ability to be able to do that sort of stuff and not have it doing that. Um, so you're right, Ted, yeah. Uh, John said, uh, 43 rumours says the GH6 is sticking with improved P... Oh. PF, dev, PDF or whatever it's called, uh, with a sensor and processor, b &H has a projected price of 2500 I don't understand why they don't get rid of that focus system, John. I really don't. PDF, just get rid of it. Waiting for the A93 and the RX10V. Uh, think it's possible this year. Maybe. Um, George said, I hope the A74 has a high viewfinder come on Sony. Surely, this is the R, surely it's going to. I so hope so. Uh, Daryl said, uh, be sure to give David a thumbs up. Thank you so much, Daryl. Yes, please, I'd love it, guys, if you do. It does make a difference. I am unsponsored, so thanks so much for that, Daryl. Uh, Juzy said, I put order for the A7 IV on the 6th of December and the camera on the 25th of Jan, upgrading from the A7 III. So you're getting on the 24th of Jan, Juzy. That's fantastic. Jealous. Yeah, it's great. I mean, I would love that camera. Um, it, it's it's an, an amazing camera. Um, Rob said, yeah, hasn't the firmware update already been announced for the AF issues? I'm not sure. I did read it somewhere, though, uh, that um, it was coming out. Um, <laughs> John said, I love it. He said, David, I was giving you the piece. Uh, you don't speak French. That's too bad. I don't mind, John, <laughs> at all, actually. Um what else have we got? Um, Juzy said, uh, the real-time tracking autofocus is incredible. I love it. I know. It's nuts in the newer cameras. It really is nuts. Uh, the 10 bits 422, both photo and video. I uh, love it as well. Um, RVG said, uh, the reason Sony put the closing of the shutter on the in the A1 and the A7 IV was because they were being bashed for not having it. Yeah, and like I said, you've got the ability to turn it off, and that's what I'd be doing. Um, I wouldn't use it uh, if that... Well, I wouldn't. Um, I would just keep it turned off. But, you know, it's a personal issue. If you want it on, it should be there, and it is on those new cameras. Hopefully, they'll add it for people that want it on the A7S III by firmware as well. Isn't rolling shutter an issue any time you're shooting a moving subject? It is, yes. Uh, but, but there's a difference with stills. Uh, the difference with stills is that um, rolling shutter, it's, the, it's also to do with how fast the sensor is. This is why the A9 is so good with moving images. Look, there's still, uh, if you are using any camera that's out there, like the A7 III, the A7 IV, um, if the subject isn't moving too much and your shutter speed is high enough, you will get a, go a good result. Uh, the issue is that, it can give you, like I said, if you were trying to shoot a, um, if you were trying to shoot, I've just got to press this because it's gone off. Oh. My computer went to sleep. Um, if you were trying to, say, shoot a golfer and you didn't want that, um, you know, the, the club to actually bend, uh, you need a, sh a sharp or a fast enough shutter speed to get rid of that. Uh, it's not shutter speed, actually. It's you need a faster, a fast enough shutter uh, oh, sensor. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. You need a, sh a fast sensor to do that, and that's what the A1 does. It gives you that very, very fast sensor. The A7 IV and the A7 III and all the other cameras haven't got that. The A9 has. It's like I showed a video a while ago with a spinning fan. Um, if you tried to take it with any other camera than, say, an A9 or an A1, uh, the fan would be bent. Uh, inside, and that's got to do with how fast the sensor is actually in in the camera. Um, so you, w and that's called rolling shutter. You will get that if something's moving quick enough. You will get it. That's why I just don't shoot with silent shutter um, with anything other than the A9 uh, in a wedding and things like that. Because yes, you might get away with it, but it might be the case that the definite image that you want shows some of the sh uh, the rolling shutter that's there, and it's just not worth doing it for paid work. So yeah, I would be very, very wary. Yes, you can. Uh, if the subject's not moving much or, uh, you know, things like that, or even if it is moving much and your shutter speed is high enough, you can get away with it. 
But if your shutter speed isn't high, like you're working in low light and you um, have the bride that moves quickly, it could be out of focus. And that's the reason why you wouldn't do it. The sensor is just not quick enough. That's the reason why the A9 was designed and that's the reason why the A1 was designed as well. So yes, it's an issue. Um... Panasonic are fantastic too. I have the S5. The only issue is autofocus. Yep, I agree. It's a, if they could fix the autofocus, they'd be so good, George. Uh, I put an order in for the Sony 50 lens in August this year. Still hasn't arrived. Wow. That's amazing how long that's taking. Uh, a great lens, though. It'll be worth the wait, that's for sure. Uh, John said, uh, David Oster, Peter Gregg guesses Lumix lenses, focus motors, can't keep up with phase detection AF. He may have a point. And that could be the case, too. That might be why. There's got to be a reason why uh, they haven't gone to phase detection. I'm not sure what the reason is there, but it is really strange. Because apart from that focus issue in video, uh, they're brilliant. Like for stills, like I said, for stills, the autofocus in um, Panasonic is amazing. Uh, it really is. I was surprised how good the GH5 was uh, and the GH4. I had both of those cameras thinking about it. Um, yeah, so, mm. and that's about it. We're down to the end of the thing. It went for almost exactly an hour, which I'm happy with. Uh, that's a good time uh, to be on. Thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. If you have any questions, leave it down below um, because I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Um, love it if you could give me a thumbs up and share it. Uh, like I said, I am unsponsored, so it, it does help the channel uh, grow. And apart from that, everyone, um, I'll see you uh, in next week's live. If I had, I'll probably will put a, a video or something up during the week as well, uh, but I'll definitely see you in next week's live. So apart from that, everyone, um, let me just switch over here because I need to check where we are. And... We are going to go. So I'll see you all in the next video, everyone. If you're looking for some